Okay, we're back now with our second video for the the Bertrand game piece tutorial. And now uh, we've brought in our image. Now we're just going to kind of draw our game piece. We'll draw a little base and we'll um, figure out how to mount the base and all that good stuff. So here's what I want you guys to do. Uh, remember, it has to fit within a 6 centimeter by 6 centimeter uh, bottom. So we're going to go ahead and just kind of make a rectangle. And we want that rectangle because my template is in millimeters. We're going to go uh, 60 by 30 and enter and then we're going to push pull that up another 30 and there's kind of the base of how we're going to do our game piece and we'll come back and we'll do some more tinkering with it but for now I just want to turn that into a group I can just use a group this time it says solid over here you want to start getting in the habit of seeing this solid over here on the right hand side once you group or component something because that means that it's going to go at least smoother when we go to actually 3D print it. And now we need to make our panther at least three-dimensional somewhat. And how I want to do this is if I try to print this panther upright, it's just not going to work. So I need to be able to print it flat. So we're going to make our game piece in two different pieces and kind of hopefully make them be able to come together, super glue them, just kind of peg them together a little bit. Here's how we're going to do this. Double-click it to open our panther. And then we're going to select all within our group, and we're going to rotate it. So I hit Q. I can just select anywhere in the middle for now, because I'm just arbitrarily going to kind of want to spin this panther so it's upright a little bit. That's probably good. So I didn't go very much. Let's see. I'll give you a number. So I know some of you guys really like dimensions. So I went up. Let's call it 15 degrees. 15, enter. And now I've spun my panther within the component, so that keeps everything straight and lined up. And what I want to do now is grab a tape measure and go over to your green axis. And then we're just going to bring it right to the very kind of first edge here. And I want it to stay on the red axis, so I hit my right arrow. And just where it touches initially, right there. So I've got this uh, tape measure line guideline that's exactly parallel with my green axis, and that's how I want it. And now from there, let's make our a peg that's going to stick in there 10 millimeters. So I hit 10, bring another tape measure line over that is 10 millimeters there. And now from the red down here, I'm going to bring a tape measure line down. So I clicked on the red axis with my tape measure, started bringing it down. Then I hit my left arrow key to lock me into only this direction. And I'm going to bring it to the, kind of the bottom of this image. So I've kind of started to make a rectangle. And I'm going to fill that part in with a line. So I go to my where it intersects. Bring it back up here to where it intersects. Oh, I missed. So let's, double, let's redo that one. When I zoomed in, I saw that I missed. What the heck's going on? There's an intersection there and zoom back out make sure we hit that intersection there and we want to come all the way over to right there and you can see now we've started to make kind of the square peg but it's going to hit right here so i want to now go down a little bit further let's have it go down another um maybe just a centimeter so we'll go 10 millimeters that seemed like too much let's go five millimeters so a half centimeter five millimeters bring it across to our guideline back up and i want this to be all one solid piece so i'm going to erase this center line so now i've got two different parts of my bertrand panther i'm going to get rid of those let's have this be about a centimeter thick so we're going to push, pull that, bring it up 10 millimeters, enter. I want to rotate so I can see this little piece. I guess I forgot to tell you guys about something too. So where you see this jaw, this piece that's floating, that's not going to 3D print well because it's literally floating. So we need to kind of anchor this to the jaw here somehow. So I'm going to just kind of grab my line tool and I'm going to make a couple, make a connection post here like that. And then I'm going to make sure I erase those lines so that it's actually connected. 
and get it all the way back there. There we go. Now I'll push pull this surface 10 millimeters. Okay, so there's our panther. We can get a decent look at it. It's going to print just like this. We made this uh, thick part of the panther 10 millimeters. So we're going to just have this. We don't need it quite as thick. So let's have it go half. We'll go 5 millimeters. Enter. And so there is the post that's going to go into our base to make our kind of two-piece uh, game piece here. All right. So that's all set. When I select that, I've got my component in the model. Everything is good. And that is going to go up on top now. So i got to spin that. So I'm going to hit Q now. And I don't want to spin on the part that's kind of the weird angles. I want to spin where I know it's square. So I'm going to go right there while it's red. On that corner, click once. Go up this line a little bit, click once. Start rotating it around. And I'm going to hit 90 and enter. Now my panther's kind of ready. I hit move and I'll move it up on top somewhere to go up on top of my game piece. All right. So let's slide that out of the way a little bit. We're going to make a hole for that to go into. So let's double click our base. We'll use our tape measure and we're going to slide in. Let's go 7.5 millimeters and let's go this way uh, 5 millimeters. Let's change that. Let's go from the other side. Let's go this side and we'll go 15 millimeters. From there, we're going to make a rectangle. We want that rectangle to be the same size as our base, which is 10 by, or excuse me, our peg, 10 by 5, enter. And now that's where this guy's going to fit. I can erase my guidelines. We only made this part here on the, on the Panther 5 millimeters. So I want to push pull that surface down. And I'm going to go a little bit more. Let's go a little, let's go six millimeters so that I know my bottom doesn't kind of bottom out. It will fit in there nice and smooth. So now I have a place where I can easily move this panther. Let's do this first. We'll line that up. And then we'll slide it down in. And you can see, and this is hopefully how this 3D prints where our panther comes out of our game piece and they were able to print better because I laid this flat when I went to print it. So let's take that back out so that I can continue drawing now. But I got my peg ready. I got my panther ready to go in there. We'll just move this out of the way so that we can focus on our base. So we're now going to kind of uh, fancy up this base a little bit. So let's start by making it look a little bit like a cabinet. And we will do that by... Um, offsetting this some so let's offset this let's go four millimeters same over here just do that by double clicking once i've already set that double clicking so that looks kind of nice that way um we're going to push pull these in not very far so let's go do i even want to go one millimeter just a little bit, one millimeter. Oops, that went the wrong way. So I undo that. One, enter. One, enter. So now I've got it kind of looking like a cabinet there. A little bit of raised panel style. Try to make it look a little bit sharper. Now we're going to decorate this a little bit. So I want to put some um, text in the middle of this. So I want to show you guys how to do that. I've clicked on my 3D text tool. Let's go ahead and we're going to put Birch Run right in the middle there, all caps. And let's change our font. We'll go to Rockwell Extra Bold. That looks pretty nice. We are going to, let's make our height 5 millimeters. That's good. And let's make our extrusion, make sure both boxes are checked. Let's make our extrusion three millimeters so I just hit three and then I'm going to go ahead and place this um, let's actually get it perfectly centered so I'm going to place it on there for now but then I'm going to move it off here to the side I know you guys like to mention so we'll do this the official way here so a couple of things here when you bring in a 3d text it kind of 
groups it in some weird ways. And so we want to get rid of some of that. That's why I never want to, I never want to do this when it's on something else because then it's not going to work as well. So what we want to do then is just click on that and we want to explode it. And it makes everything kind of individual. All right. Now I can definitely go back in and regroup those things. But we always want to explode it when it's fresh out of the um, 3D text tool. Okay, at this point, we now want to um, kind of help ourselves to centering this. So we're going to make a rectangle, and we're going to go corner to corner. Oh, I chose the wrong corner because of that N. Let's go bottom corner to top left corner. All right. So there's a rectangle, and then we want to uh, mark center by using our tape measure tool and finding the center lines. And there's that one. There's that one. So now I have some things to help me center this. Whoops. Click the rectangle. Triple click to make sure I get it all. Then I want to bring my guidelines as a part of that. So I got everything selected. I'm going to right click it. I'm going to group kind of that back portion. And now let's also select our front group. And we can use these to center our text. Let's bring it back onto the surface, on the face. That's good. Grab this intersection, and now I want to try to find the midpoint by sliding up and down here. And there it was. I was pretty close already just by guessing. And this one might be pretty close too. Let's see. There's the midpoint. Didn't have to go too far. So now this is on here. We can get rid of just our back. We don't need that anymore because that helped us to center it. And we want, instead of having this birch run stick out the front, let's have it become kind of cut into this base. So here's how we're going to do this. We want to move this in there. So we're going to grab the move tool and grab on the front. And I want to make sure it stays on that green axis. So I do that by hitting the left arrow key. And I want to go until it says that it is on that plane. So constrained on line intersected, intersect plane. That is where we want that. So now it is a part of it. Okay. Now we're going to go up here to edit. We're going to cut that out. Double click our base. And then we want to paste it right back in place. But it is also still a group. <clears throat> so now let's right click it and explode it. So now you can see that it kind of became more a part of what we have going on here. It took away the center of our R's and our B. So let's fill those back in. We'll just grab a line tool to kind of help heal that like we did before with the Panther. Just by drawing lines, it knows to heal those surfaces. So now we got it all filled in here. And what we actually don't want is the fronts of these. You can see how that's now cut out the way that we want it to be. So we're basically just erasing the fronts of our letters so that we have a hollow imprint there. And Bertrand is now kind of cut into the front of our base, which will look nice. So we've got that, and no Bertrand game piece will be complete without uh, making Mr. Berkmeyer happy here. So let's add some more font, some more 3D text, excuse me. And we're going to do our, everybody knows this by now, all right? One school, one family. Instead of the Rockwell Bold, Let's use a script font, and so we'll maybe just try this, I don't even know how you say it, it's a go script. It's bold, that's good. Let's stick with the 5 millimeters. Let's change the extrusion height though, and let's only have that be 1. Let's go ahead and place that, and we're going to put it right up here on top of this thing. Alright, not very centered right now, we'll work on that. <coughs> Excuse me. We have to do the same thing that we did before. We don't want it on top of that when we explode it because then it will maybe become a part of it. 
So we bring it down here, right click it, I'm going to explode it, make all this kind of separate. And what I actually want to do now make them separate groups. So I'm going to select just that one. I'm going to group it. The other one, group it. And then I'm going to carefully make sure I grab on the bottom. Grab it somewhere on the bottom. And we're going to bring it back up on top of our base here. And let's have that kind of we're going to eyeball. I know you guys don't like eyeballing, but for the sake of speed, our video is already getting long here. We'll try to center it above where the game piece is going to go. And now let's grab this one and we'll do a similar thing, but on the bottom of where the panther is going to go. I'll get a good view to try to get that pretty center. That looks pretty good. Okay, but at this point, those are still kind of separate. So let's do the same thing here. Let's grab those two, edit, cut, double click on our base to open that up, paste them back in place, and then let's explode both of them. We lost our O's. We're going to do the same thing to fix that that we did for the B's. So I'm just going to take a line tool need to double click that. I wasn't editing it. And then that heals that O. And same thing here. And I have one more O. And then I've got to fix the A. And I will be all set, I think. So there's that O. I'm missing the inside of the A. Oops. Don't want to zoom quite that close. Man, right there to right there. So there's our A fixed. So now we've kind of got everything going. One thing I like to do, I want to make sure all my lines are kind of good together and nice and working. So I highlight everything. I right click and I want to make sure everything's intersecting the way I want it to. So I'm going to intersect everything with that selection. And now I'm going to go back through once it's all done. Make sure there's no holes. Remember thinking about this like it's watertight. We want to create an object that water could go in and not leak out of anywhere. So I believe now, let's see if I click here. I've got everything together, I believe. Okay, so I've got my game piece base and top now made. And we need to make sure it's ready to 3D print. So we're going to add a new extension to help us do that. So let's go up to Window, Extension Warehouse. And I want you guys to do this on all of your SketchUps as well because this will help us to 3D print. And we're going to look for Solid Inspector. Type that in, hit Enter. And it's the Solid Inspector to the second power. I don't know why they call it that, but maybe it's just a second version. And we click there. You may have to sign in to do this. I'm already signed in. If it does ask you to sign in, just sign in and then say you want to sign in using uh, your Google information. Sign in with your school stuff. I'm going to hit install. Do I want to install this extension? Yes. The extension has been installed. Okay, great. And just waiting for it to kind of finish things up here. It'll come back, it'll say installed, I can now X out of it, and let's check it. So I'm going to click on my base, and then I need to go up to Tools, that's where it installs at, and it's the Solid Inspector right there. And when I run this Solid Inspector, it's telling me i got a lot of issues. Let's see how many it's going to fix for me. If I hit Fix All, it does all of the work for me to fix these errors that is now ready to 3D print. So I am good to go there. I want to go up here to View, Toolbars, and I want to keep that whoops, Solid Inspector around for a while. So there it is right there. Now I'm going to drag it up, put it on my toolbar, because I want to keep that around. So 
there is now my base is all ready. Let's run the same test on our panther head that's the top part of this. So as I've got a few things going on, I hit fix all. I was able to fix all of them. That won't always happen. You may have to do some, own, some of your own fixing. Uh, but right now that little inspector was able to get everything that I need. Now, uh, I'm ready to print. Um, the next video will walk you through the actual print process, but this is what you want to kind of have saved for now. So I'm going to go back up here. I've already uh, titled it for what I want to save it. You may want to go to Save As. I'm just going to hit Save, and that completes the second tutorial video.